the checking account because that's my huge internal control called the bank reconciliation. So if I'm going to be depositing differently than they're going to be hitting the checking account with, then I want to use some kind of method to allow my bookkeeping system to deposit in the same grouping that's going to be on the bank. That could happen and it's most likely to be a problem if you get like cash payments and then you deposit in a group amount or if you get payments from like credit cards and the credit card company, for example, is grouping your deposits together in some grouping format and then putting it to your checking account and you're trying to track the actual customers, then you got to come up with some kind of system which might include another account, which you might call a clearing account called undeposited funds, putting it into undeposited funds so that you can figure out the grouping of the funds as they go into the checking account then make the checking account deposit in our books in the same format as will be on the bank statement so that you can then reconcile our books to the bank statement the reconciliation being a huge internal control and something that we want to make sure to do and the software down below that's the default setting so if you weren't to make any set any changes the quickbooks would deposit it into this undeposited funds now just realize that that undeposited funds is because partially because of this reason because no one really learns it in normal accounting because they just call it cash up top is a thing that gets messed up a lot people don't understand what that is and why you would use it and so on and then it gets it causes problems so you want to get an understanding there is a purpose for it if it if it's necessary to do you got to know when it would be necessary and when it wouldn't be so we're going to do it would be the same thing we're going to say this is happening on let's say 415 except we're putting it into a cash account but we're calling that cash account undeposited funds also note that if you're using a quickbooks specifically software then they don't actually call it a cash account they call it an other current asset account but it's really a cash account the reason they put it into other current assets is because it doesn't behave like a cash account and the quick so it doesn't have this, the same kind of settings you need for a cash account generally to be qualified as a as a cash type of account which is really from a software standpoint they're designing the account to do certain things for a cash account therefore from a functionality standpoint it actually works better as an other an other current asset account but if you were to kind of group it together it would in essence be a cash account because it represents holding on to actual physical dollars that hasn't gone into the checking account yet okay so then the other side is going to go to the accounts receivable accounts receivable account and this is going to be for that 1400 we're imagining we are getting paid by by this now alignment and dent here so same thing except that we're going into a different uh a different cash account so we're going into undeposited funds that's in h5 equals that 1400 and then the receivable is going down so here's the receivable we're just moving it from here up to the cash account double clicking on it going to the end of it plus we're going to pick up that 1400 credit taking it back down that puts us back in balance once again there's no impact on the income statement and therefore net income at that second transaction because we're getting even though we got money because we recorded the income when we issued the invoice because that's closer to the point in time we did the work and allows us to track the receivables with the use of an accrual based account which is accounts receivable and so now let's post it to the gl so here's the undeposited funds that's 